It's all good though, man. They say Benz is roll, Beamers jet, and caddies keep on dipping. Well, I must be tripping. I'm in the old school pie flipping, selling them high jipping, tending to my pimp. Right. Hold on one second. Let me give you a couple more seconds here. Okay. So that I'm settled down. We ain't making your noise. I'm oh, get shit. A... You know what? Hmm. This got to shut off. Here, I got it. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's what we're talking we're about. You want to pour his drink before we, uh... We cool. Yeah, he, yeah, he can do his thing. Yeah, okay. Shane, I'm going to be getting mostly a medium shot because this is in my four barrel so. That's fine. You can go up high yeah. and go low, too. Okay. Um, if you want. Did you yeah. say you know? um, I saved it to the hard drive. So okay. you're, it's saved to the desktop. So okay. when we go in and actually, when she sends you your email, we'll be able to copy and paste it into an email. Is so there, did y'all start already? Yeah, the yeah, computer yeah. got turned off. Okay. I got to Okay, I'm going to go down to the um to the house real quick and come right back. Okay. Right. I got to send that email. I'll see you in a second. All right. I'll be back. I'm going right down the street, Dre. Right down the pivot, clean pivot. <laughs> hey, you're at 2 point, or 3.2? Uh, I'm at 3.4. 3.4? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just go a little rich, man. Yeah. All right. Um, it's your show. Okay. And your show. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. No doubt we were here with a legend from the Bay. Mm. Straight from the V, right the Leo. That's right, that's right. Give it up. More than 15 years in it, huh? Yep, something like that. So uh, we're going we're gonna to knock it out with Matt Dre, and we got the first question right here. And uh, this question is, what is rap? What is rap? That's a good first question. Rap is uh, a way of expressing yourself through words on top of a beat what frame of mind you might be in, want to be in, experience you might have had, to a beat. Um, rhyming, to a beat, on beat, expression, on beat, rhyming. And as many ways as you can get yourself to express that point are your styles. Okay. Feel me? Yeah. Can anybody rap? Can anybody be a rapper? Uh, I used to ask myself that all the time. When I ca uh, came home in 96, I tried to actually t make a rapper out of anybody or nobody. And everybody can't be a rapper. Unless you have enough money to force feed the public to believe and to dress him up. And then, then you can make a rapper. But he won't really won't be a rapper. He'll be probably, he won't last long. One hit wonders. Mm -hmm. You can make a one-hit wonder. For sure, <laughs> if you got enough money. Okay. All right, good. Um, what is it about the rap? Is it the beat or the lyrics or both? Right now, times change. When I first started, it was more uh, a combination of both. Like, I mean, when I first started listening to rap, Sugar Hill Gang, Curtis Blow, it was a combination of both, mostly... Uh, just a combination. Lyrics and rap together made everything. Then as time changed, like when groups like Public Enemy and stuff like that, then the lyrical content really became more of a factor. And people wanted to hear, what is you saying? Or what are you saying? What is you really saying? Mm -hmm. If you're saying something, if you're not saying nothing, we don't want to hear it. Then times changed. Like now, the beat is like 95% of what's going on. You could be saying anything. As long as it's banging, slapping beat, and you can get the hot uh, heads banging, you feel me? It's a slap. Yeah. So it depends on where where people's heads are at the time. And what is it for you, Dre? Right now? Yeah. It's always lyrically with me. It's always lyrically with me because not just fans on the street. I don't just rap for the fans on the street. I rap for the rappers that rap, too. I rap for Yuck Mouth and Keek rap for me, and we rap for each other. So I, my game got to be lyrically tight because I'm rapping for my niggas, too, that rap. Right. So I can't have no faults in my game. So it's basically a lyrically lyrically thing to me. But I got to pick the right beats for it to get uh, the right people to listen, though. Right. So you feel me? You can't just rap over what you might want to rap over most of the time. You got to pick beats to wear as... Like I say, where people's heads are right now. People are up on an upswing tempo right now. Feel me? Yeah. You, you've been in so long, doing your thing. 
Is it kind of like a uh, with rappers? You said most people may think that you know you make records for just fans. But you just right. mentioned you make rappers also for your homeboys, for your people you came up with, right. like your peers. Is there like a fraternity of rappers, like something like a, a peership that you do when you see Dr. Dre or when y'all see each other? Well, I ain't met Dre yet, but as far as uh, it's 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 certain levels. It's just like you take baseball, you got your triple A. Mm-hmm. Still pros, but they still ain't made it to the pros. Then you got your people in the pros. There's pros, but they ain't all stars. Uh-huh. This is just a certain, it's certain levels, and, and I treat everybody that's giving it a good effort with the same uh, uh, respect. But it's different levels, and once you reach certain plateaus, you see what what level that you didn't reach. Now uh-huh. you come up here with the guys that's selling. It's really record sales. That's what they respect the record sales. Record sales, record sales. You could have a hit in the streets and still don't still be respected in the record industry because you ain't sold a lot of records. Right. So once your record sales get to no- notoriety and you get to statistically, man, you selling records, then that's when you jump up into the real professional or the next plateau. Right. You keep on. I still ain't made it up to the top plateau yet. Feel me? Mm-hmm. I'm still reaching to get up there with a few people like Jay Z and them and. People that I follow, like Tupac, I've been in it. Me and Tupac was doing shows around here together when it was rap. Right in the beginning. <laughs> when niggas was rapping, like hip hop and all that, when it was rap. Right. He's okay. trying to cut a little bit of right off. Oh, I got him. Okay. There you go. Hold on, Drew. Wait till the light. Is it good? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, What's your highest high when you have a mic in your hand? What's the thing when you're on stage that makes you feel like, yeah, shit, that's what I did it for? When somebody of the totally opposite walk of life is sitting in front of me singing my lyrics word for word and bobbing and just knowing, feeling it, and knowing I'm saying, even when I'm using slang words that I just might have made up, they know by the way I used it in the phrase or whatever, they still feeling to know what I'm saying. And this person is doesn't do, it's nothing like me. It's nothing, color, dress, girls, whatever. It's nothing like me. But he's sitting in front of me, singing word for word, no word for word. So I'm like, yeah, that's what it's about right here, baby. And after the show is over, when that promoter comes, <laughs> chip you off. Yeah, cash me off my bread. <laughs> yeah, this is about here, baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's that. Is it like communicating, that type of thing? It's feel definitely like? communication thing. It's a it's a way of forming. For me, I'm expressing. I'm I'm representing a, a I guess a secret society of people that I know, the rest of the world don't know about that exist. That's that's just just as uh, entertaining as the rest of the people that are on TV. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole culture that I'm representing that I know people don't. So I'm communicating with and for the people of that culture. You feel me? Yeah. Sharing something that they might not otherwise be exposed to. Yeah. Okay. To you, what what do you see as the influence of pimping on the MC in terms of like bragging, profiling, the swagger, your style? How does pimping influence the MC? Okay. That's a good question too. Pimping has a lot of influence on the MC because of a pimp's mouthpiece. For him to be able to talk uh I don't know if you've seen some of these hoes and strippers nowadays. They are, some of them are bad, beautiful, could be doing modeling or whatever, whoop whoop So for a pimp with not a dime or a dollar in his pocket to be able to get this girl to t- turn over her everyday earnings, which can range from 500 to 5 Gs a night and do it on a consistent basis and have four or five of them, you got to come up with some of the most catchy things that a girl ever heard, you feel me? So when a pimp talk, and a rapper listen, he listening to, man, this man is spitting it. He using his gift. These words I've never even been heard put together. I ain't even heard the president talk like this. So he, he, it's just those one-liners that you get to keep the people interested that the pimp got that's influencing the rap game. You feel me? All right. You got to keep the ear. Okay, that's good. Good answer. So the next question is, what is a pimp? Well, you got people that define the word pimp. It's it's a few definitions, but there's a run real hardcore. The real meaning of a pimp, 
from around here, Frisco, where pimps is risen, you know what I'm saying, Fillmore Fleming them. A pimp is a man that's getting his money. His business is his business is making these women go to work and make money and whoopie whoop and uh, financing they managing their money and everything and keeping and he getting all the income and, and, and running running a business off of sex. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies selling sex, women selling sex. Sometimes they don't even have to sell sex. I know hoes out there that are five G's going a shopping spree with rich people. Just come be my jewelry for the weekend. For five G's, bitches go get on the airplane, go to L.A. and be with some rich ass guy for the weekend, just so he can show off at the parties and shit. Like he got a tight ass blonde, blonde hair, blue eye, bimbo with him. <clears throat> Dre, right. what's the difference between a pimp, a player, a gigolo, and a mac? A pimp, player, gigolo. Pimps are more structured pimps are structured they got rules moral standards and codes they go by and they real they real serious about their business and they keep themselves they it's, it's a real business with a pimp you feel me on, on the pimp aspect a player is it was just what you say he's playing he's doing what he's lying to bitches he got bitches over here he got about four bitches he got bitches everywhere. He's doing what it takes. He don't. He got this bitch thinking they the number one. This bitch think the number one. He talking to this dude. Got him thinking this. He playing. He's a, he's a player. He's good at it. He's a, he's in the game. Right. A, a player is a person that really plays the game. And a gigolo, you know what that is? <laughs> That's a dude that he's fucking. He likes to fuck, but he's getting paid for it at the same time. But he not getting paid no welfare check money or nothing. That he getting paid keeping the shit sharp by. Fucking these top-notch ladies that want to cheat on their husband and what have you. I know a few guys that's working their gigolo game. <laughs> clean cut. Is, is it going clean good cut, wearing those Italian cut clothes, those tight silk silk shirts and black shoes and with shiny shoes and what have you. You feel me? Yeah. Staying polished. That's it. Okay. That's if you got the stamina. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can't be a yeah. gigolo. Huh? Have to lay it down. Okay. What about a, a Mac? Well, um, my name happens to be Mac Dre, and uh, I got two definitions for that. I am M-A-C. I don't know, it's not M-A-C-K, M-A-C, and that's for the master, the art of communicating. Mm -hmm. Like you said, this rap form is communication, so I think, you know, I got my I got my bachelor's in this, um, in this communicating game, right, with all races, kids, 9 to 99, you feel me? But uh, the other M-A-C-K, like short we talking about, is... Is a form of a pimp, but he more lenient when he is. He not as, you know, pimps pose, they like this. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know what I'm saying? They structure it, it's rules, they get slapped, they beat the bitch down, what you will. Uh, Mac can more like so do what he want to do when he doing his pimp game. He pimping, but he doing it the way he want to do it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Okay. More of an independent style? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. What is it about the pimping that attracts females? Draw a picture for us. Well, mostly, a pimp, when he talks, that's what's firstly, I'm exposing game and the pimp smoke might don't want me to, you know what I mean, get too deep on it, but a pimp, they, they, um, they can, they're articulate and they can talk and they know more things than the average, mostly black guy would know. And it, and, and um, it fascinates these women for them to be around a real nigga, you feel me? When they peep the realness, it's just kind of like infatuation. Then most girls that run into that money at a at a young age, like 19, 18, cannot manage the money worth nothing in the world. They can act like they're going to save up to get a Mercedes, but they'll never get that Mercedes. Always got bill problems, woo -de -woo -de -woo. so they're really not good financially handing their money. A pimp going to make sure his bitches are buttered, got money, got cars, and everything else, because the more buttered they are, the better they look, the more the prices go up. Hmm. So they're going to get treated good, everything is good. So it's kind of like a, 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 a baby on the titty thing. You feel me? You need that titty for a minute, or you need some people get strung out on it. They need it. It's the it's the dependent, you feel me? That's my that's my guardian. Yeah. He can handle my business more than I better than I can. You feel me? Yeah. A lifeline. 
I don't have to worry about bills. I don't have to worry about getting nobody beating me or doing nothing. I don't have to worry about it. He got it all. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Here's a question, Mac Dre. Who are you? Who is Mac Dre? Man, I'm many people, and they all want to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> they all want to get paid. Man, I didn't grew up in this. That's the reason why I've been a lot of places, and there's no places like the Bay because so many races interact with each other, and they, they get along good. It's not a lot of racial tension out here. If there's any tension, it's was tension between he's from there, he's from there, or she did this, he did this. So I was born in Oakland. State was raised in Vallejo, Concord, San Rafael over there, Marin County, everywhere, you feel me? So I, I, I think, and I didn't kick with all different kind of people. Sometimes I get tired of being thugged out, so I go kick with the, the other guys for a minute. Or some will do, will do. So I'm many people, and that's what I think made my style so so different from everybody else's because I didn't damn near, you feel me? Yeah. My Asian everybody. cats, my Filipino niggas, my niggas in Frisco, Mexicans, and you know what I'm saying, a little bit of everything. I got all kind of friends. Feel me? Talk about that, the value of that, as opposed to That's maybe being... That's so valuable, okay. because it's, 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 man, you can talk to, you can you can do things that other people can't, because they, they got the blinders on, and they don't know, because they haven't opened up and lear actually learn. If they have been exposed to this stuff, they weren't learning and seeing what it was really real. I'm, I'm a people person. I'm interested to see how other people live. You feel me? What they might be doing. And when I went to the feds in Lompoc, it's damn near you have to be aware of your surroundings and the kind of people. You got to have a good judgment of character within the first two to three minutes when you meet somebody because something can go down within them next five minutes, you feel me? So you got to be knowing what kind of person that you're dealing with. So I learned, to, I got a good judgment of character being in there too. And the feds is not like the state pen. We got people from all 52 states. Mm -hmm. And the uh, states, the other areas that the United States control, like the Virgin Islands and all that stuff. So you got my people, then you got Jamaicans and Wutu. So I'm in there interacting with all these people. They all want to hear me rap. Heard I was a rapper. Heard I had nice things on the street and was interested, just like I'm interested in them. You feel me? Uh huh. How that feel, if I may ask, when you uh, you know, had, when you were behind walls and you, people, you was like a, you know, people knew you. What was that like? It was when I went to um. Everything cool? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. you just you slid a little to the, a little to the left. All right. Oh, you're right. That's good. When I went, I was yeah, twenty. 21 years old, right, when I went to uh, Lompoc, and you know how you hear stories when you're young about the pen, people getting stabbed up, right, 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 right. so I didn't know what, I wasn't scared, but I was ready, prepared for the worst and everything, so I didn't know what to expect, so when I got up in there, and uh, you, didn't, you wouldn't you wouldn't think that so many people like from the Bay Area would be, you, oh, there goes such and such from Oakland and him from Richmond. So people knew about me and they were kind of like, yeah, that's my partner. You, you gonna represent us for rap. I was the representative for the Bay Area and the federal penitentiary, you feel me? So, and they, and, and, and I'm, I'm the poster child. So every so often I had to go up in the band room up in there and eat a rapper from New York, LA, wherever they came from, wherever, whoever thought they can rap. And they peoples brought them up there to the band rooms to see if they can get down with Mac Dre, you feel me? So it made me, it gave me a little bit of respect when I was in there. So I was up there as a mob figure with the mob figures, you feel me? Yeah. Because I could entertain the mob figures. Yeah. Huh. <clears throat> okay. Uh, were you born who you are or were you taught to be what you are? I was born in Oakland. Stayed in Oakland for a minute, went back to, my mother's from Vallejo, but she was out here when she had me, so you feel me, then back to Oakland, so I'm, I'm a Bay Area, Bay Area cat to the heart. First, my mother worked in Frisco as long as I can remember waking up, you feel me, so she'd been back and forth commuting to Frisco, so, um, basically, I'm, I'm just like you, and whoever else from the Bay Area that might be watching that's into rap music, and, uh, who I am... Um, I'm the, the, 
the Scarface for the Bay or the Jay Z. You know how everybody got that. I'm one of the rap stars for the Bay. That's my thing. I'm representing the Bay Area. You want to see people from the Bay Area on TV with nice cars and with why it's not nobody from the Bay on TV or shining or doing as many things. I'm trying to be that guy for my Bay Area folks. You feel me? That's why every time you see me up, I'm see me pull up, I'm gonna pull up stunting and something that costs sixty thousand, seventy thousand or better. You feel me? Diamonds with a mouthful of girls' best.